What is up? Today, we are checking out the warning, the title rising documentary. Want to say thank you to my button, Justy. Justy. Justy? <laughs> to my... Thank you to my buddy Justin for the recommendation. I'm insane. Um, <laughs> yeah, more warning documentary. We have done the May Day in the making not too long ago. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I've done a whole bunch of other warning reactions as well. They're all down there in the playlist. I got the playlist settled out now, so you can just go by playlist. It should all be right. So, all right, let's do it. Here we go. We obviously started playing here in Mexico, where Mexicans were from Mexico. So our first shows were always here in our home and then just across the country. And I feel like we've seen it grow over the years and how we started and just our crowd. And it makes me so excited so that excited, people yeah. my age are looking for this energy and like this music specifically. Yeah. I'm sure it's crazy to see that everything grows. There aren't a lot of female-led rock bands, female, like, only Completely woman women. rock bands. So, we started working as a young teen, a kid. Mm -hmm. We didn't even start out as women. Like, we started out as little girls yeah. in this children. industry. Children, literally. Yeah. Yeah, it involves a lot. And we were doing it with our parents. Like we were we were pretty protected. Like they supported us so much. They got us into lessons. Like they bought us our instruments. Like they give us the liberty to like really concentrate yeah. on music. Because imagine you're like just a teenager, maybe 13, and you want to do this. But of course, so there's tons adorable. of different things that you want to try out and do. So like sticking with it was also hard, you know? started out as a five member band. Our parents are part of the band. Right now, yeah. obviously, our family has grown a bit more like, with our team, our management, and everyone that works with us. But as we keep on working, that is always like the center of everything. And everyone yeah. we start working with starts feeling like family because we've always had that vibe. to be like disciplined and responsible and like level-headed yeah that, and, I, and i feel like that's really important for the industry that we're in mm -hmm. so a big hug to mom and dad for everything well we think Ew. really got us into this energetic music and rock and roll was definitely the rock band, the, the video, video game. game. We love to play that game and it was so fun that we just like looked at the screen and we just, oh, we want to do that. I told my dad like, I want to play the guitar. And he's like, are you sure? And I was like, of course. By the first week, my fingers hurt so much that I was like, please, no. But I fell in love with it and there was no going back. I've been playing for 13 years. I don't like that number, but okay, 13 <laughs> years. And uh, well, I've been playing since I was a little kid. I would always play on the drums, like the toy drums. And I remember just, I really liked hitting things. things. So it was like a perfect match for me. And my dad saw that I have really good coordination. And he asked me like, hey, like, are you up for lessons? Like, do you want to give it a shot? And I was like, yeah. Nobody wanted to give me lessons. I was a 
I looked like a toddler. I mean, and, like I was big, super, super short. short and, like playing the drums, it didn't look very, very promising for me. But uh, I met one teacher and I had like a like a test class, mm -hmm. and the teacher was like, "Oh, leave her with me. Like, like she'll be good. Like, let's do this." bought me my first bass and of course I was really young and really short and I couldn't play a full scale bass so they bought me a smaller bass which I it's have right here. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's really small and I still couldn't play that and I learned for about a month and then we started playing play together, together immediately <laughs> so I yeah. didn't really have like that much time to get used to my instrument before we started playing together Okay, wait, but I know that this isn't part of it. I'm going to ask you a do question. It, do it, do it. Because it's like, do it. Cause yeah. I know, I know, this isn't my place, but I will. Because there's a lot of people who tell you, like, why don't you play with a pick? Because normally oh, rock music true. is just like, pick, but pick. you, like, from the start, it I was always like, play with my finger fingers. style. It's, I play, yeah. I know how to play with a pick now, and I do, I really do like, like the sound both. of it. But I don't know, I just always played with my fingers and I do feel more comfortable with my fingers even though I do play more on time with a pick, it's weird. It does hurt more though, but... I get it! <laughs> it's like when I play without shoes and when I play with yeah, shoes. Yeah, I get it. it. In our careers cool. like we did our enter sandman cover which went viral but i feel like the point where we were like we really want to do this like for the rest of our lives was when we started writing our own music and releasing our own stuff that was like whoa like i can we can create something yeah put it out in the world and people react to it it was just something that we really really like really? liked yeah. and looked forward to so now that we're doing what we do today like, I, I just feel like it's the thing that really keeps us going, our music. Of course, like any type of siblings, like we have our disagreements and our little fights and stuff like that, but we get along really well. We and I know each other so well that yeah. we know how to make it work. Exactly. And in the second that we start writing music, but everything you know, just like, flows really nicely. Like, I don't know what to call it except like sibling magic. first compositions ever. ever. It was our first time writing. I was like 12, Danny was 14, and I was nine. We oh, were children. Right. <laughs> but I, it was the moment where we really fell in love with music and like what we wanted to do. Like creating something was just such a powerful experience. And you know, it was such a key thing, I think, personally, that we were not thinking about will people like it, well, because we were not going to release it. We were not even going to record it. Uh, it was not going to be a thing, so we just literally wrote from our 14-year-old's hearts. And I'll jump into our first album, 21st Century Blood. And it was weird because some of the compositions that are in 21st Century Blood were written in the in same the time era of... as Escape the Mind. Mm -hmm. But there I, there was this very big leap we gave with this song that we made called Free Falling. It was the first song we actually wrote together. together. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it was also a big cool. thing that we started like looking 
for outside inspiration. We really like what's happening in the world that we can write about. And more than anything, like we read so much and we consume a lot of yeah. media as any Gen Z team does. <laughs> so we were constantly getting inspired by other Different stories scenarios. that we were hearing. Mm -hmm. So 21st Century Blood was like, we felt like it was our first step. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. like, okay, we're a band now. This is our album. And nothing will change. thing that I really like that we do, we really looked for what the song needed. We were like, okay, so what if this is a song with only piano, violins, and stuff like that? Like, we didn't focus on, oh, we have to be uh, rock. We just focused on the energy that yeah. went into the song. So if you hear our music, sometimes it will be very varied within the mm -hmm. same album. But then Queen of the Murder Scene comes. It's our second album. And Queen of the Murder Good Scene. <laughs> I was I was in middle school. I started album. going through my emo phase. So <laughs> you can you can hear it clearly there how that shift Makes and like sense. I am angsty now. these albums like grew with us it's yeah. literally you can see like the change yeah you can you can feel the like, personality. personality yeah Are and you know yeah. the murder scene is a concept album it tells a story a novel and yeah it was like a novel and it was a really different process writing songs to fit a narrative mm -hmm. and a plot it was really hard it was actually. hard because we had some and then we had to add like the filler episodes, uh -huh. but yeah. we didn't want them to feel like filler, filler songs. songs. So we really had to put meaning into every single little part. Yeah. But I was like really into this idea of making it a whole album about the story. Yeah. And when I told them about it, they were like, what? Why is there blood everywhere? Why? I was like, we, please we hear had, me out. We had to change so much, like a lot story. of the storyline, because it was it wasn't it was that like much that. of a storyline. It, yeah, it was just, just like murder. murder. Yeah. But at the same time, we were getting into. I was getting into K-pop. <laughs> That's true. I just so that too. we took the emo face K-pop, like right. express line, right? Yeah. So you can hear a lot of influences in there that maybe you don't pinpoint them yeah. as such but for us it's really apparent like which faces we were going that through change into the, the one those key like... changes those harmonies like it was all very k-poppy for us it's a thing that we also love to do that as we start learning new ways of doing this we just like okay what's the next thing that we can try out with our music yeah so and in, in Queen of the Murder Scene, it was key changes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. It was <laughs> definitely. Change the key! That was a theme. things are really different now because mm -hmm. I feel like we really grew as people even as musicians, more like right because we're going through our teenage years of course you grow a lot from one year to another mm -hmm. and you you start living different experiences and stuff like that so I feel like this third album is personal yeah. like it talks more about our feelings or situations that are close to us or our opinions in certain situations was one of the songs that we started writing yeah, right. together and we had music first yeah. before lyrics and melody. It's usually the other way around. So the three of us were in this, this room, room yeah. and yes, Danny right and I were like playing, like getting the riff. And I was like, let me write a melody really quickly for the verse and just like put some lyrics on there. I haven't seen the video, but I've seen that one. That's a good line. That's a good line. I'm not in danger, I'm the danger. I 
do feel that it encases what this uh, new album represents for us, the changes that we went through as musicians, as people, and in writing, because we saw things differently. Like right now, we really concentrated on adding a lot of like new harmonies and how like the bass and the drums were going to play together, together. and then differently at the same time. Like there is so much room to grow and we always enter these situations like with big wondrous eyes like we're gonna learn today mm -hmm. what are we gonna learn now <laughs> what's gonna happen yeah. now <laughs> Mi ritmo bueno para gozar, mulata. Oye cómo va. Mi ritmo bueno para gozar, mulata. Pam 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 pam. Definitely performing our songs live is a totally different universe. Like we treat it as such, even ourselves. We know it's nothing like recording in a studio but song. it's so much fun you're like directly sharing uh, and expressing to the people who are watching you and like, i feel like, like our past albums we try to grab like the sound like how we sound live into mm -hmm. our recordings and yeah. we never really oh, we have never accomplished we anything. never accomplished that until like this, this third album. album i've already collapsed so I'll just drown my sorrows in a non-existent world. We put in a lot of hard work yep. into our live yeah, shows. We, we really plan everything out and yep. we practice it a lot. And even lot. Our, our movements, like if you see us playing in our early stages of the band, we're oh, just like statues. <laughs> and that's something that we actually worked oh. on consciously. It's like how to play, being able to like jump around and bring more energy to the show. Like, like, we make fun of each other while we're on stage. And I know like I shouldn't really be like saying this, but even when we mess up, we're like, oh, you messed up. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, we just, we just like, look at each other, each other like, like, you messed up. up. show in our country and in our home city it's just absolutely it's amazing cool. actually our last show that we played was in mexico city and we hadn't been to mexico city in a long time yeah so coming back and seeing that we had more fans like there were a lot of people watching us it was just insane it was it one was of the so best cool. shows people like had. screaming our songs we actually have like a video where you hear everyone singing on top of like it's yeah like, like you you can't, you can't hear, hear us <laughs> A big scene like, of energetic people yeah, yeah, ready people are for really a little. Passionate about yeah. music in general here in Mexico, and the crowds are always really energetic. Like this energy that they transmit, you just can't help but give it back. It's really about making like a personal connection of what you want to transmit through yeah. your instrument. Cause I, I like I look at our past videos, like our covers, <laughs> no, no. and I'm like, no, no, what are you doing? But we were so young, we were starting out, so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like that's a really nice thing. Looking back and see, like seeing how much you've improved, how much you've grown. A veces las cosas obvias son las más difíciles de ver. Te asfixiaste con tus propias manos. Cuando todo apunta que por fin alguien te viene a rescatar, te encuentras nuevamente abandonado. At the end of the day, like, there's a goal. 
and there's something that you want to reach. And it's really about putting in a lot of work. And just also be very conscious that the people who work around you are different, you know, are going through different things and will think differently than you. There's no one that will think exactly like you. So taking things with a grain of salt and not taking things personal Personally. for it to ruin like your experience is a key thing. You know, as sisters, we really have like that separate, you know, our working selves and you know, our sister selves. stereotypes or these stigmas like we've seen it in places we've played in festivals and stuff like that like the treatment is really different to like other bands like male bands but we see that change after like we play mm -hmm. yeah we play and then like people's faces completely change yeah. and like everyone's just so Which excited is fun to see because they remind themselves that it doesn't matter who is playing their age whatever it is it's about the music music is the language it doesn't matter like where you're from like what language yes. you speak like anything like music is the, the language, Awesome video. It's already been a long video, so I'm just gonna say a couple things. Um, I love watching these documentaries. It seems like the more you learn of the warning, the more you love the warning. They are freaking amazing. It's so cool to learn about all the albums and how just everything they said here was so, it was so cool. I really, really enjoyed all of it. Especially like the younger videos of them just, you know, doing stuff. Really cool. Really cool. If anyone has any suggestions, you can throw those in the comment section. I do read them all and put, write them all down. Check the, the links in the description if you want to. I got some stuff in there and that is going to be it. Don't want to hold you guys up any longer. So I'll pee. Catch you guys next time.